This video is going to be about my lip injection experience, my cosmetic injections experience. So if that is something that interests you, then definitely keep on watching. If it's not and you just wanna see the workout section of the video, then you can please just skip to that. I'll leave the timestamp on the screen so you know where to click to. If you are just someone who's random and doesn't follow me and you're clicked on this video because you just like hate the thought of lip injections or injections or whatever, then you're not welcome here, so bye. <laughs> no, but seriously, this video isn't like a dumping ground for like ignorance and hate. I'm not trying to change anybody's minds, nor am I trying to encourage anyone to do this. I'm just simply sharing my experience and hoping to be informative and helpful to people who are considering it. My people that do follow me on Instagram and on YouTube and have watched my journey, I was always planning on being very transparent with you guys. It is important to me. The reality is that so many people do get this done and I feel like if they don't share it, then it sets unrealistic beauty standards and that isn't something that I personally want to participate in and I'm definitely not immune to comparing myself to other people I do it all the time and I am a very analytical and logical person and when I look at someone online I assume that most models Instagrammers celebrities have all had cosmetic enhancement in some way especially on their face it's just super super common now and there can't be that many people who are like blessed with very full lips for example bigger lips are such a beauty trend right now and that's all it is it's just a trend cosmetic fillers are very very safe and effective so much less invasive than getting like surgery on your face you can make gradual changes over time that look super super natural and are quite undetectable and guys i guarantee you that the celebrities that are always celebrated for their super natural look and compared to other celebrities that might have had like more extreme either plastic surgery on their face or extreme like cosmetic fillers they've definitely had something done too they just chose to do it more subtly like lips naturally thin out with age and it just makes no sense that there would be such a prevalence of people over 30 like celebrities who look 18. There are definitely people in this world who are blessed and age gracefully but there's just not that many people. It just makes logical sense and statistical sense that celebrities are getting some treatments done so I just accept that fact and I decided that I want it too. <laughs> and the most amazing thing with fillers is that they are 100% reversible. Like they're not permanent at all. And the results only last for so long and the filler just naturally breaks down. And I promise I'm not saying any of this to like encourage you guys or convince you guys or anything. Like if that's not your thing, don't do it. But I hope that maybe putting it this way can help you if you are like comparing yourself to just be realistic. You guys, before I ever got my first lip injections, I had been considering getting them for over a year before that. And I swear the only thing holding me back from getting them done was the judgment that I would receive. Like just judgment from other people, from people online. And then I just realized like that I need to just do things for myself. That's my main reason. I just wanted to get this done, so I did. Another thing that I got treated was my facial asymmetry. So I know it's totally unnoticeable to literally anyone but me. The right side of my face is completely weak compared to the left side of my face. So it's just like flatter and smaller, if that makes sense. And I kid you not, it's to the point that like on my iPhone photos recognizes each side of my face is a different person. So obviously like in this job, I get photo shoots, I video myself. I would get really discouraged because I'd look at the pictures, especially from photo shoots showing predominantly the right side of my face. And I'd be like, it doesn't look like me at all. But let's face it, <laughs> get it? No one's face is perfectly symmetrical. I honestly think because of my perfectionism, I do have an eye for aesthetics and just symmetry overall that it was really noticeable to me. And I knew that I could easily just fix it so why not i needed to find someone who i could trust who had a really good eye for that kind of thing and would be able to spot exactly how to balance it because i'm not going to trust just anyone with my face i know no one notices but i do have a scar on my nose when i was a kid i ran into like a piece of furniture and i got like a severe cut on my nose and it took out some cartilage so I've always had kind of like a bump that is something that I had got filled previously when I first got my lip injections done can't remember whether I mentioned that yet but I got them done for the first time in June a really subtle effect just like just to try it out and just get a feel for it to see if it, it was something that I really wanted to do but obviously since it's temporary it does just break down over time and 
go away. So I just wanted to get it redone. Okay, so all that being said, I do think it's really, really important that you go to the right person for this kind of thing. The first time I went, I did my research and I went to a doctor. This time I wanted to try someone else because I knew that I was going for like a very specific like custom -y type thing that I wanted done with only one side of my face. I had a friend who had seen Dr. Johnson before and totally recommended her, said she was amazing. One of her staff followed me on Instagram and on YouTube. So we got in touch and we had a meeting and everything and it just sounded like the perfect match. Honestly, as soon as I met Dr. Johnson, right away I felt so confident in her. You could just tell that it was her passion and that she was there to like do the best possible job. She listened when I explained to her what I wanted done, you could just tell that she had such a good eye for it. She recognized the asymmetry and the difference in my cheek. So we decided to go ahead with just um, the filler on the right side. So once it was time for my procedure, you have to get numbing cream applied. So I got two different types of numbing cream. One, um, the face one. So I got that put all in the areas that uh, I would get any injections. Um, and then one specifically for the lips. The lips are a lot more sensitive. So I believe that it's a stronger numbing cream and you just have to wait and let that kind of work it and do its thing for 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so the lip like clown cream that I have going on here is numbing my lips so fast. Like they already feel really fuzzy and like I can't really talk. So that's a good sign. So I got my lips done first. Hey guys, so this part of the video is going to have like graphic footage. So if you are squeamish or if needles bother you at all, then you might want to just listen to the audio or just stop watching. Dr. Johnson noticed the asymmetry in my lips and she put more on one side, which I believe was my right side. Yeah, just to even out my lips. And that was something that was never offered to me in the past. I actually mentioned if it was possible when I got my lips done the first time and they were just like, no, we don't do that. I think they really wanted to stick to like what they do with everyone. But Dr. Johnson, she was like an artist. She made sure that both lips were even and she recognized the fact that like some people just don't have perfectly even lips. I've done so much dieting in the past, like dieting down for shows. It made my face really lean and I never quite like gained the fat back on my face i got like quite a lean face and i had pretty defined cheeks and like lines around my face so dr johnson suggested that i get that done so she just put a little bit on my laugh lines here so the filler that they use like the juvederm and there's another one which i forget the name i'll put it on the screen is made up primarily of hyaluronic acid in gel form this ingredient hyaluronic acid it does actually occur naturally in the skin and it is what preserves the youthful look in the skin. I can't stress enough how important it is for you to see an actual doctor for something like this. You do pay a little bit more obviously, but it is so, so worth it. Doctors have the ability to diagnose and prescribe um, in, in the case that there aren't any issues. There is a very, very small risk and extremely small risk if you're going with someone who is very skilled of blood vessel blockage. So the filler can get in a blood vessel and block it. And a doctor can recognize the symptoms right away and dissolve the filler, prescribe any treatments necessary. You would definitely more likely get the issues with blood vessel blockage coming from a cosmetician, like someone who isn't a medical professional. And if it does happen with them, they often can't guarantee their work. It just gets left undiagnosed. I just wouldn't risk it if I was you. If you were considering this, I would definitely highly recommend going to a doctor and like specifically Dr. Johnson, because she's amazing. As I mentioned before, Dr. Johnson specifically has been in the cosmetic industry for over 16 years. Um, on her website, you can read through her bio. I definitely knew that I was in the right hands. So as she was actually working, obviously as you're like getting injections or whatever, your face is gonna swell up. So she, when she was finished, she asked, me to come back after two weeks that's when all of the traces of swelling will be all gone so that she could actually review and check her work to see the final result so i thought that was incredible like she took so much time to make sure she did a perfect job she listened to me she did like obviously a custom to my face and just my specific asymmetries and then she wanted to make sure she checked her work and i know that's something where you're like yeah you're paying so much money and you should expect that but guys it is not common in this industry I have spoke to other people who've got treatment and I also personally have gone to another cosmetic clinic in London that was hella expensive and was you know like one of those like celebrated ones that you go to and just because cosmetic fillers are so 
prevalent now. They're so popular. It's becoming like a booming industry. A lot of clinics are very commercial and they want to see as many patients as possible. They want you in, they want you out basically. And they want to give like a very standard cookie cutter job. I just personally think that it's always better to go with someone who wants to put in that time and that extra bit of effort into their patients. And that is totally Dr. Johnson. Like she spent so much time ahead of time making sure that she understood exactly what I wanted. She asked me to check how it looked as she was doing it so many times. I'm just blown away. I'm so, so happy. It's not just me. She does guarantee her work for everybody and she does spend as much time with all of her patients. Overall, I am so happy with everything. I was like low key, like worried because it is your face. Do you know what I mean? But overall, I could not be happier. I think my results look really natural. I love my lips. I think that they look like a lot fuller, but still just like I said, really, really natural looking. It just gives me that little boost of confidence. Obviously this type of thing, like I mentioned, it only lasts six to 18 months. It is something that you would have to get redone if you did want to continue to have that look, which I will. So I'm definitely going to see Dr. Johnson again. I will never see anyone else. She like knows dermatology as well. So she even gave me advice on my acne and prescribed me some acne treatments and stuff, which I will share with you guys. If you guys do have any questions at all, I am thinking about doing a Q&A or a more in-depth video. I'm 50-50 on whether I'm going to allow the comment section in this video because I just don't want to read the negativity. If I do leave it open, then definitely ask your questions down below. If I don't leave the comment section open, then if you have any burning questions or feedback, then you can definitely email me and I'll leave that in the description below. But overall guys, so I'm wearing light makeup right now and I do have like a hormonal breakout going on. So just ignore that. I didn't get injections in this chin. It's just a large pimple. I'm not wearing any lip liner or anything right now. And I just think that they look really nice and like look just fuller and more natural. So, and then obviously, my right side of my face. So as you can see, like, that's just this part here. My left side. While recording, I completely forgot to address the fact that the clinic is located in London. However, I do recommend if you do travel to London, if you live in England, it is worth going to London to see Dr. Johnson. If you are considering this, even if you're traveling like my friends from the US or like my mom coming from Canada, it's worth it, even if you're just visiting. But yeah, so that is my experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. Like I said, no pressure to do anything you wanna do, but if you were already considering this, I hope this was helpful to you. So that's it for that part of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it answered some questions for those of you wondering whether I got my lips done. I'm now moving on to the workout section of the video. So Becky and I got back from London and on the evening this is the workout that we did and we decided to film it for this video. It is a dumbbell only glute and leg workout. I started off by doing some just body weight glute bridges in order to activate my glute. I find it useful to make sure you do some glute activation exercises before you start your actual workout. So for the glute bridge, I just make sure that I am driving through my heels, squeeze my glutes from the bottom of the movement and really try to curl my pelvis under, like tucking your tail between your legs kind of idea. And then I moved on to doing some 45 degree hyper extensions. These are really, really good for glutes. I find they're a really underrated exercise. They're even good as a finisher. So what you wanna do is uh, take a wide stance with your feet turned out on the little foot pads and bend your knees slightly. And you want to literally use only your glutes to lift your body. Don't use your lower back at all. So the focus isn't to get a completely straight angle with your hips. It's fine if at the top your hips are still bent a little bit as long as your glutes are squeezed completely. I started the main part of the workout off with some sumo stance squats. So I did these with a slight low bar position on my back. This is optional. If, if you'd rather keep the bar just on your neck slash traps, that's fine as well. This is just more comfortable for me. So I took quite a wide stance. You can't really see it as well from this angle, but at the end I do a couple reps from the front and you can see that it's a, like basically as wide as you can go while still feeling stable in a squat. And you just want to do just a as if it's a regular squat, you probably won't be able to get down as low, but the, the wide stance forces most people's glutes to take over. So it's a really, really great glute exercise. And honestly, I don't do it enough. 
Notice how I start squeezing my glutes from the bottom of the movement and my torso remains in pretty much the same position all the way up. It's slightly leaned forward um, and I squeeze my glutes all the way up to the top and you can see they're fully squeezed and my pelvis is locked out at the top. If you squeeze your glutes and lean back ever so slightly in that kind of split second at the top of the movement then it's going to shift the weight back and actually keep some loading on your glutes. Next I moved on to a sumo Romanian deadlift so this is very similar in stance to the squat however you're changing the loading pattern by holding onto the barbell so <laughs> um, what you're actually doing is shifting the weight forward and because of that it's more of a hip extension movement and therefore you're using a lot of your hamstrings or more of your hamstrings than you would be in the squat so it's now very much a posterior chain exercise honestly oh this is such a good exercise it's another one of those ones that like i don't know why i don't do more often it's surprisingly good on the hamstrings like oh it's so good you guys definitely need to try this one out it's just like doing a regular romanian deadlift you're just going to slightly bend at the knees and shift your hips backwards keeping the barbell really close to your body lower your torso forward just as you shift your hips back so it's not you're not bending over you're more like i like to give the analogy of kind of sitting back on a really high seat or bar stool or something like that um and then making sure that you use your hamstrings and your glutes to lift the weight and lock out at the top. So yeah, you definitely want to make sure that you're squeezing your glutes all the way at the top and lean slightly backwards again. This one is a lot more stable so you can actually just lock out and hold it for a split second. So I get a lot of tightness in my left glute and I find honestly that I need to stretch it. I try to stretch my glutes before my workout even though yes I got asked in my last video whether or not it was okay to do static stretches and I think if it's going to increase your range of motion before your workout then it is still a good thing to do along with dynamic stretches but I need a good static stretch on my glutes for example to make sure that they are released enough to be able to get the full range of motion so that I can actually use my glutes to their full capacity. So I did that stretch and I also did some dynamic stretching in the form of leg swings as well before I did my unilateral leg exercise which in this case was a wide stance wide kind of stride <laughs> walking lunge. I love this exercise. It is difficult to do balance wise when you're taking the wider step and you can totally see that I struggle a little bit with it especially on my left side since I do have that tightness and I have um, a little ankle bone spur meaning that I don't get full ankle mo mobility either so you can actually see that it's easier for me to do it on my right side. So I do require in order to like tackle that glute imbalance that I have on my left side I definitely require to do a lot of single leg exercises and to prioritize my left side so I'll usually always start off by a rep on my left side and maybe do one or two extra reps with my left side I won't ever do a full extra set I don't think that you need to do that much in order to correct an imbalance but um yeah a single leg exercises are a must anyway because they really do help you with stability and balance the third exercise I did was another unilateral leg movement so this one is a single leg Romanian deadlift now obviously I do not have the balance in order to do that like one leg on the floor the other leg flying behind you like a ballerina I wish I had that level of fitness so I don't so instead I actually just plant my opposite legs toes on the floor and I'm not actually pushing through that leg at all I'm only using it for balance all of the weight is on the forward leg that is working um, and you're just going to do this exercise exactly like you would a regular Romanian deadlift but focusing on that one leg um, so your knees are slightly bent you're moving your hips back and keeping the barbell as close to your body as possible and just squeezing your hamstrings and your glutes on the way up. You can see here that I am rotating around my toe. I just find that it allows my body the movement range that it needs in order to get the most out of this exercise, but I, I'm not actually pushing through that toe, I promise. So yeah, I this is 
one of the first times that I've done this exercise and I actually do really like it. Um, I'm, I'm not one to experiment too much with exercises because I do have those core compound exercises that always work for me and that are foolproof, but I do really like this one and I'm definitely going to do it more often. I got the worst hamstring work from this exercise. I don't want to say soreness because soreness is an indicative of how well your training went, but um, it is a nice reminder that you did actually hit the area that you were targeting. Um, okay, but this one killed my hamstring, so who knows what it actually was. Uh, do not doubt this movement. Like, this is really, really difficult. It's also going to um, hit your calves as well because, as you can see, the barbell is rolling um, from my heel to my toes, meaning that I'm pressing through my toes and I'm using that gastrocnemius calf muscle. Um, yeah, this one's a killer. Um, you, you're using your glutes to keep your hips up and you're obviously using your hamstrings to curl the bar in towards you. So definitely give this one a try as well. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this workout. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!